Welcome here at the D3 Hoops Classic with a D3 Hoops Classic conversation with senior Lindsey Cleary. Cleary, you hit the uh, or Lindsey, you hit the game-winning <laughs> shot uh, in a in a close game. A game. To first, tell us about the play. It looks like things broke down, and then you kind of found yourself with the toughest short uh, short range shot I can think of. You were under the basket, fading away off the glass. Um, definitely it was a tough shot, but at the end of the game in tough situations like that, we have been practicing those and pra we've practicing those situations in practice, so we're ready for those sort of shots to go in. Yeah. You know, this was a game where if you look at the stats and, and what the team has done to this point, it was sort of a game with nothing went right, right? So Parrish fouls out, uh, you've got uh, Milan who gets hurt, uh, you're playing without Maya Love. You have a quiet game, Longo has a quiet game, and you still find a way to win. When you're in that game, you see Milan go out with an injury, Parrish goes out with the foul trouble, you know some of the other teammates are struggling. How do you keep yourself in the headspace to, you know, keep being ready to make that play to win and not, how does it not kind of cascade and get overly frustrating? Uh, I think just something that we've been pushing this whole season and the whole four years I've been here is that our team every year is very deep. So no matter who's in the game, we've been working with those units in practice. So if I'm working with, who knows, not the starters, anybody else on the team, like we trust everyone to make those shots. We trust everyone to know the plays. Everyone knows how to talk on defense. So it's not like there's any fallout when the starter goes out of the game. Yeah. So this is a team I talked with your head coach uh, after practice yesterday. We're used to teams from the, the Sky Act, the Southern California Intercollegiate Athletic Conference, being relatively short, right? So a lot of teams with their guards are 5'5 five, five and below, their forwards are 5'10 and below. Uh, you're a team that has some height and uh, you have some great depth. Has that been your case for the full four years there? Are you guys the aberration in terms of the way your roster is built or is this something that's sort of evolved over, over time recently? Um, p positionally, I think we've always been about the same, um, if not taller sometimes in certain positions. Um, I mean, usually our point guards tend to be smaller, but I think that that doesn't really hinder us against any of our opponents because every time, no matter where the strength is in the other team, we're able to have someone go off in another position. So, yeah. yeah. You know, you're a team that uh, had a, a great record last year, missed the NCAA tournament, lost in the conference tournament final to Pomona Pitzer, your, your rival there. Uh, and really because of the strength of schedule, you know, we're really not able to get into the at-large uh, at large situation. Was that something that you guys were aware of? Did you try and schedule up this year? You've played a lot of really good teams. Gustavus, you've played uh, you know, St. Vincent here today, Pomona, which is in conference. You played Wash U. Um, it, has, has the non-conference schedule been tougher this year than in the past? I say we always play tough teams in uh, our preseason. This year, I would say it is a lot more. We've played two tournaments versus usually la the last few years we've only played one tournament. Yeah. So we've played two tough tournaments, and, or th and we're in the second one right now. Yeah. Um, but definitely, we're going to have to go up against tough opponents if we want to be consistent throughout the whole season. So that that last game, there's no let up. Talk to me about the uh, the coaching transition. So Dowling was there for a long time. She was kind of the face of Claremont basketball. Takes the job and goes to Pepperdine to become a Division One coach. A new coach comes in. My understanding is she gets there September first. The uh, pre uh, uh, classes start September second. She has her staff in in place by the middle of September. That's a really quick turnaround. How was that for you as a player? Take us through kind of the transition from uh, between coaches, particularly I'm sure Dowling recruited you mm -hmm. when you were in high school. Yeah, I mean, we're really happy for Coach Dowling. She has a great opportunity at Pepperdine. Um, as, so far as the uh, coaches, the, the athletic director was kind enough to let us have some say in the who, in uh, interviewing the potential head yeah. coaches. So when we interviewed uh, Coach Chanel, like we had a great talk with her. And so when it came on for her boarding, um, she had individual calls with each of us before we got to campus. Uh, she had individual meetings with us once we got to campus, not about basketball, then about basketball. So yeah. we got to know her very well. And it's very clear that she cared about each of us um, when we came into preseason all the seniors were all very motivated to get to where we were last year and farther yeah. so we just kind of hold each other accountable when it came to preseason uh, pickup and stuff like that and making sure that we're all uh, there for things like lifts and stuff like that but once we got into practice there was no let up uh, the coaches are there to push us and we told them what we want and they are very clear on that and they're there for us every day to keep make us keep getting better how yeah. different is the team uh, under coach Chanel from coach Dowling um, I mean, it's a, it's a new team every year because we have some new players. Um, 
I would say our offense is a little bit different, our defense is a little bit different. We shifted those things, so there was a lot of learning in the first few weeks. We're still doing a lot of learning after each game. There's always things that we're like, okay, we got to fix this, and we work on that in practice. Um, we've worked a lot more on our one-on-one -on -one game. Um, so there's a lot more ability for each of us to be creative in the offense. So I think that's a main difference. And on defense, I'd say our defense is more aggressive with our trapping, with our press, and with our one-on-one. -on -one. What did you look for in a coach? So uh, frequently, uh -huh. it's usually the other way around. Yeah. The coach is recruiting the players, and this is actually not uncommon. We, uh, you know, George Fox, Northwestern Conference, same situation where Coach Capolino was interviewed by the players as part of the, the, the process for getting that job. What did you ask? What were you looking for? Uh, well, the seniors, we all talked, the team, we all talked about um, what sort of things we wanted to coach before we met with the potential coaches. So things that I wanted was I wanted someone who cared for each of us as players because working or playing basketball in D3 as well as academics, like it can be tough. Um, so we need someone who can understand that we're balancing a lot of things and adapt their schedule to that. Yeah. Um, and then obviously someone who wants to push us every day because you can't just let a win be a win and say, okay, well, we'll come back tomorrow and practice. Yeah. You got to talk about it after the game. You got to watch the film. You got to be very available to work with us one on one yeah. uh, to help us get better outside of practice and stuff like that. So, someone who really wants to push us and um, not let us have just practices where we slack off. So, you're a computer science major. We look up and down the uh, the roster here, bio majors, you know, uh, your backup point guard wants to be a spine surgeon. Mm -hmm. I know this is an excellent school. It's an excellent consortium of schools. How do you balance academics and athletics? Um, I mean, it's pretty much that, you know, you balance the two. Um, you got outside of practice, there's a lot of tutoring opportunities for all of us to go to. And then we have study groups with the team where we're not all in the same classes, but some of us are, so that's really helpful. Um, but just things like that. The professors are pretty understanding and will meet with us outside of class. Um, coaches are understanding if we have exams and things like that, and they'll work with us outside of practice. But yeah, it, it's been going. It's it's a tough it's a tough thing, but you know we all love to play, so that's what's really pushing us. You're a senior. I know what comes next is second semester, and you know hopefully a run to the NCAA tournament. Do you have a sense yet for what comes next professionally? Um, I'm still figuring out some things. I mean, I'm computer science, so I'm looking for careers in uh, technology. I think it'd be cool to be able to continue playing basketball sometime. Like, that's really what I love to do. Sure. So just that. Yeah. Oh, last question for you. You guys are the most local team. I don't know if you've ever personally been to Las Vegas. What do you have planned for your weekend here that's not basketball? <laughs> oh, um... I mean, we've been pretty much focused on uh, Very focused basketball. Yesterday, practice, yesterday was yeah. a long bus ride, so we were all pretty tired, and we woke up early this morning. So, I mean, right now we'll probably just go get some food, and I mean, maybe we'll be able to get out of the hotel, maybe explore the pool a little bit. That might be nice. But, yeah, so, until the game tomorrow, that's what we're focused on. <laughs> you, do you get right on the bus after the game's over and drive right back to Southern uh, California? I think we'll probably be able to shower first, but... <laughs> That's what I hope, yeah. <laughs> Sounds like a business trip, but so far you're 1-0. You're oh. Congratulations on the victory. Thank you. Appreciate it. With the D3Hoops.com Classic Conversation with uh, This is Gordon Mann.